Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about Brain Lord. Brain Lord is one of those games where it's uh, heavy on the puzzles and it's a decent RPG. It was made back in the day from Enix before Square and Enix became Square Enix. But everybody knows that. Uh, Brain Lord was often called around my house Brain Load because of all the difficult puzzles. I personally enjoy this game. It's fun, and the puzzles aren't hard to do. I mean, sometimes you'll stump them. You play the part of a man named Mazir. In this case, we're calling him Dick Butt. And it gets heavy on the story, daydreaming, and it sets you up to tell you that you're part of an ancient race of dragon warrior rider thingies. And it just so happens, you hear about a dragon. Or rather, dragon scales. To put it in a nutshell, you're probably going to have to read that little note. It's a matter of fact that gravitates you towards it naturally. The one thing I hate about RPGs is that sometimes they just don't let you do anything until their story's complete. So we're just going to skip ahead real quick. Read that real quick. So basically, uh, the place you're going to go to is the Tower of Light. And that's about where our uh, episode this time will stop. Because, uh, well, this is a long game. So before we do anything, let's go outside and go to this uh, house right above the inn. It gives you a little quick something to do. This woman will let you have all the treasure chests in her attic if you kill all the mice. She can't pay you money, but it's a hundred gold per mouse you kill. So it's not like you're going um, empty-handed. The two chests chests carry a uh, scrap of paper and a buckler. A scrap of paper is nothing more than just a little clue. You can sell it for two gold. After you're done there, you need to head to the blacksmith's house. It's right next to the church-like thing. This will remove the guy that's blocking your path to the Tower of Light. But we're not going to go there right off the bat. Instead, we're going to farm for some uh, gold. We're going to keep on fighting enemies until I get about uh, 20,000. Uh, and it won't be so hard. And don't forget to put on that shield. I always forget to put that shield on. It's useful. keeping yourself. It'll keep you alive. Uh, all shields have endurance levels, which every time you use it to block, you lose one point. Now, this is along the way, but remember, it's important to go into this cabin. Just uh, head on down the stairs. And um, some people will find this important, but uh, you get your first fairy of the jade here, free of charge. Now, I don't use it, but, you know, it could be useful. It's a crimson jade. It shoots fireballs. I didn't want to give it a name since I don't use it. So, it gave the default name, Ifri. The heart is extremely important. Since you don't level up, you require this to increase your health by 1 HP per use. And there's tons of them all over the place. You will not uh, go without finding at least a few. Anyways, there. We farmed up to 20,000. Now this is what we're going to do. We'll go back in town, and I'm heading to the end first. Stairs. Ignore these fucks. You don't need them. Oh, that door right here. This guy here sells fairies and jades. Now, you're gonna use a good amount of money to buy this power jade. This I find to be the most useful jade that you'll ever have. I never take it off. It's always in one of the slots. Um, well, let's... You know what? Let's name it Ass. Yeah, that sounds about right. Is ass be okay? And I'm pretty much done here. I'm, none of the other jades are useful to me. You might, if you're having, if you're new to this game, and don't have very good skills. You might want to buy a deceased jade. Uh, for every level it has, it can revive you one time. But that's if you really suck. 
now we're going to go to uh, the magic shop. Which the magic shop is the house right above the uh, blacksmith's house. So there's the blacksmith's house. Move, bitch! I hate that. You get to talk to her at her uh, table. So we're gonna buy uh, impulse. You know, it's not the best spell in the world, but it'll do for until you can get magic shot. To use magic, you just hold down the attack button. Now, I have a thousand gold left, so I'm gonna use that to buy one uh, wedge of cheese. That's in case I'm getting my ass kicked. Now, let's get out of here. We're gonna work our way to the Tower of Light. You notice that, uh... The enemies are now only taking two hits instead of three. That's the power jade at work right there. It's giving me plus one power. And for every level it gains, it increases my power just a little bit more. Which is why I keep it around me all the time. It's a good way of um, making the game a lot easier for yourself. I don't need to go in there this time. Oh yeah, your shield can work full of damage people. That's great. Uh, you can take either of these directions. It's all the same. Oh, fuck him. Just kill him, kill him, kill him. And, uh... Those orbs are what the fairies use to pick up their experience. It's like... I think it's like 25 or 50 experience per orb, and uh, each fairy has, can, will take either 2, 3, or 4 orbs. The power jade requires 4. So I'm using my magic to uh, just uh, one-shot all these enemies. Like I said before, the uh, impulse is not as good as uh, the magic shot. You'll see what I mean soon enough. What I like right now is that uh, since you know this is the start of the game, they make the game very straightforward. Let you um, walk around, but you will always know where to go because it's one big path. These statues are important for warp gates. Even though you're, if you're playing on an emulator like I am right now, which you know I feel kind of blasphemous, I have this for Super Nintendo. Um, if you want to use warp gates, you're going to have to uh, use those safe, those, uh, safe ones. Each floor has just one. Go. Just, uh, you know, I don't like uh, taking forever on these things, so just casting spells on them is the uh, sensible thing to do. I'm going to do my best to give you the best outline path, but try to take out some irrelevant stuff. But at the same time, I'm giving you a good look on what's going on here. I love the Tower of Light music. I, I'll post the uh, thing I did about it later. You know, to take this one room and make it as long as possible. Yeah, you know, all my jades on too, so now I'm getting more power. It's not yet strong enough to do anything about them, but these skulls take one hit now. This is your beginner's puzzle. It's straightforward, it's easy to do. I really don't need to show you how to do it, but I'm going to anyways, because I know that not everybody out there thinks on how this thing works. I know uh, a few people that took a little while to figure out how to get this rock to the switch. Even though the answer is right there. There we go. Uh, let's get through all that. You go in this door right here. And uh, this looks familiar, right? A bunch of rats. So kill all the rats. She will uh, let you have what's inside the treasure chest, which is magic shot. So I'm gonna uh, 
finish talking with her, whatever. I find it more superior because it takes less time to charge and it deals a little bit, it deals a considerable amount of damage. Those well, eyeballs in the wall I ignore, you could just hit them and they'll pop out, but they take forever to kill and they're only 100 gold, it's like, not even worth it. slightly more advanced puzzle. Iron balls don't stop until they hit a wall, so uh, you need something to block their path. Push. Go. Alrighty. And what you got in here? Some jellyfish with a brain. If it touches you, you get affected with the numb effect. And it kind of like freezes you ever so often. Really annoying when you're in the middle of a jump. And a reviving mirror, which uh, brings you back to life if you die, if you have it equipped. And now we're continuing on. Spikes on the floor. You can notice that there's like little squares. They make it to where you can tell. And here, we're going to go downward because this is how you get a key. This guy has an item for you. That's a warp gate. Three warp gates. Why waste 1500 gold when you get one up? Find another one. And, uh, pay attention to this. Secret entrance. Now, I'm gonna do a quick kind of walk around. There's two secret entrances that I know of here in the Tower of Light, and I'm not too certain which one is which. But, uh, this one's important to me because it carries an item called the Magic Wallet. Magic wallet uh, takes a per small percentage of everything you earn and puts it in the wallet. It's a good way of making uh, reserve money if you're really low. But for a person like me who's played this game quite often and a lot, it's not so important. See, magic shot's useful. You'll see the mushroom here. That uh, refills 10 uh, health to you. And look, a third board game. And a heart brush. Alright. Here's door number two. These are the most annoying things you'll ever bump into. The minute you're in uh, visual range of them, they'll go to you. And here's door number three. Personally, I've never used the longbow or any of the bows, so uh, we already got the key. We just need to keep. We just need to get back over here. This is where you use your first key. Key to the seal. Is what it's called. Alrighty. And once you enter there, this little room right here. Oh, if you fall, it's not. It'll take a hit point off of you, but that's about it. It'll start you back from whatever door you came in. So be careful. Don't try to jump around like me, because you know, uh, once in a while I do this and I'll just like fall down like a million times. And chain mail is better than your current armor. Put that on. Now here. Uh, we're going to be getting the fourth floor key, but there's a lot of nice little nifty things you can do here in order to enhance your abilities. I'm going to do it. I never ever pay attention around here. There's just so many spikes and I'm just so lazy to watch for them. And it's not hard to kill these things. Okay. What I hate about this place, these statues, is they take forever to kill. Forever. And you know, my magic shot's stronger than my regular attack. Imagine what happens if I was striking it. This is a safe way of killing it. And in all honesty, it's a good way of killing it. And uh, 500 gold is 500 gold. There's your third floor key. I said fourth floor before. My bad. And here's the secret passage. We're going to take the path on the right first. 
couple of skeletons hanging around. Nothing you can't handle. Get a charge shot. Die, bitch. Okay, and in here, there's more skeletons. A source of power, which raises your power from 1 to 3. Don't understand what that really means. All I know is I believe that it's permanent. And uh, another wedge of cheese. Very useful. Let me get your ass kicked. Now we're taking the left path. There'll be some more skeletons on there. Once again, nothing you can't handle, and the next room is guarded by skulls. Now, I recommend this jade to uh, somebody who gets their ass handed to them all the time. Let me just clear out these skulls real quick. Alright, the Foundation Jade is like the Power Jade, only instead of power, it increases your defense. The more you level it up, the better. Let's call it Asperger's. Or, Asperger. Sure. Anyways, we're done with that spot. This is the next room we visit. Gotta love all these spikes. Fuck these spikes. Drop a protect is like a source of power, only for defense. And basically, now that we got uh, the third floor key, we're coming back this way. Pretty much ruining all the exploration for you. Because since I have a good idea of where to go. And the third floor key works on this one. And it is quite obvious. This puzzle is a little bit more advanced than the other two, but it's not hard. Let me show you how to do this. All you need is the two rocks and two iron balls to complete this puzzle. Alrighty, just angle them like I got them. I don't know why it works this way. It's probably an easier way of doing it, but this is how I resolve it. And it always works. Oh no, everything will lead you to this solution. And this is where you'll receive the X-ray glasses. That's uh, pretty much your map of the dungeon thing. Then you gotta talk to her again and get her out of the way or she won't leave you. But basically, this is what it looks like. Nothing like too detailed. Now, when we're upstairs, this is the first door you go in. More jumping, more jumping, more jumping. This game loves to make you jump. Some of the most frustrating jumps you'll ever see are later in the game. When they start doing things to your, the ground around you. I have a stronger sword and a stronger shield, which I put both on. Now this is a phantom floor room. You'll bump into these ever so often. They're annoying, but not by any means frustrating. All you have to do is memorize what places don't disappear. You notice that I can one-shot all the uh, skeletons now. Just about everything here. That's with uh, the extra power from the sword and the power chain. Just work your way down. All this is important. I had to do something real quick. Yeah. Shield bash. I don't understand how I can shield bash somebody. I just know it happens when I get too close. And it's automatic. There's a button to raise your shield, but I've rarely ever had the need to raise it manually. Okay. Now this room has several doors. One that goes up that leads you backwards. There's a key for it, but I never use it. That's the armor guy. He sells you what you already have obtained. And here's Ren just hanging around like a dumbass. How these people adventures when all you see them is while well, walking around with their finger up their assholes? 
In terms of fight, they're useless. This is a new type of steel ball. They bounce off the walls. That's a bastard. This puzzle ain't hard to solve. There we go. Push. Push. There, you're done. No problem, right? Now you got this big lug to fuck with. You can block your shots, but, uh... He's still not smart. There we go. Steal his money, steal his lunch. Now to resolve this puzzle, all you have to do is shoot the trash chest a couple of times. And then do something about that. I hate those things so much. There's your crossroads key. Now you gotta get back. This is the best way to do it. But, uh, let's check what's in this door. Hey, wait. Oh, I know there. Let's just jump ahead a little. Another source of power. Like I said, those things are helpful. I don't know if they're permanent, but it, uh, I use them when I get them. Okay, just, uh, oh fuck, iron balls, I forgot about those things. Are they hard to avoid? No, not really. But if you forget about them, you mess up. This puzzle has two resolutions, but we're not going to worry about that right now. There's a heart down here we need to take. And there it is. Now, the first resolution is to open up the right door, since that's the door you haven't been in yet. There you go. Two iron balls and a rock. And then you're met with glowing balls, and you get magic missile. Shoot that shit in the darkness. It's actually quite a useful spell if you're not knowing what you're doing. Now, the second resolution is simple. You only need one iron ball and the two rocks. And it's obvious, if the two middle switches and the one on the furthest right opens the right one, then whatever is you didn't flip opens the left. Now going back out here... Well, this is a uh, life fountain. Thought you might want to know. But I can use it right now anyways. There. Got my hit point back. Little fuckers. To the left takes you to the fourth floor. To the right takes you uh, to where you need to get the key. Watch this puzzle closely that I'm about to come up to. I need to get out of this one first. Uh, kill, kill, kill. Hey, look, Hass is the level 5 now. Uh, find an enemy here a minute ago. Oh well. Boo on you for making me go all the way around. Open the door. Yeah, the iron ball is the key. Down with you, turn across. Good running start, and there you go. Only way to get in. Uh, Barnes needs you to find a partner in order to get that door open. And guess who you turn to for it? This fucker. This little guy says he's gonna follow you, but it doesn't seem like he's following you. And at first you probably go, what the fuck? But once you get there, he actually shows up and opens the door. And what did you get bumped? Uh, bumped into with, you get these fucking orange live balls again. I hate these things. They're everywhere, and every dungeon uses them more than any other thing. You'll see bunches of rocks, you'll see some of the regular balls, you'll see a couple of the ones that bounce off the of walls, but the most annoying ones are these. And there's your fourth floor key. Just gotta make it safe for me to get out of here. Oops, my bad. Alrighty. When he's back out here, you'll see Ferris, that bitch in the robe. And she's getting frustrated because she can't figure shit out because she ain't a human being like you, apparently. Get out of my way. So let's go to the fourth floor. We're gonna use the fourth floor save point and then we're gonna warp back into town. Because, uh, I'm a power-hungry fool. I love to kill the and the bosses as quickly as possible, and you, with good reason. So let's go on up here. Use that save point. Now we're going to use warp gate. If you 
never used a warp gate before. Uh, any place you have saved, you get to uh, warp to. Which in this case, we're going to the arcs. So we're going to the item shop. We're going to buy two power capsules. I don't think we need any more. And don't forget to buy a warp gate. Now we're back. Taking the left path on the fourth floor will take you to a hard brooch. Nothing too uh, extravagantly awesome, but equally important. Just a little bit of jumping, let's screw all that, let's get to the heart. Now, taking the right path takes you, gives you the key to the boss, and then to the boss himself. There we go, straight to the right. You see this little thing right here, and then you just follow the path. It's as simple as that. No complex jumps to get to it. Just excessive amounts of walking. There's the key. Now, for the jumps. Alright, patience is key. Just starting to say, okay, you're getting the hang of this game. You're gonna stop fucking around. But nothing too hard, just patience. Patience, patience, patience. Wait for the right moment and make your jumps. Don't try to be a badass. Okay. Oh, I just totally took that arrow. Anyways, the boss is right there, but since I'm long, uh, I'm damaged, I'm gonna go to this door real quick. Get some health back. Now it's time to go face off with the boss. Which is a giant cockroach. That doesn't feel too menacing. I don't know a single person that's died to it. Oh, hey, left of heart brooch. Better use that. Okay. It's pattern simple. He just follows the walls. All you have to do is use your power capsule real quick. Beat the start beating the crap out of him. Swing your shit around. There you go. Hit him. So, I'm going to put on the next one. And now a dramatic death. And you're done with the Tower of Light. The room above opens for you, and you collect the Dragon Scales, and you work back to the Arcs. And that's it for uh, this episode. Next one, we're going to go from... Uh, the arcs to the site of civilization, which I have to say there's a little trick in there that I want to teach you. For now, good night and see you next episode.